maybe video and audio. And also to make a host to Haven Hong. Um, I, I think you can listen me, right, Avin? Fantastic. Now we will see if we can get you audio as well, so you can speak just to try. Yes. Uh, oh, can fantastic. you hear us? Yeah. Here, can you hear me? Perfect. Perfect. Great. So we uh, can... could you also let um, Elizabeth and Ariana Elizabeth. Uh, unmute themselves if they want, because they are speakers? Sure. Please, can you help us with Elizabeth Tom and Ariana Carvalido? They will be both speaking. Hello, Ariana. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, it seems like Elizabeth cannot release her camera. Yeah, that's something else. Please, can you help us authorizing the video, please, to Ariana and Elizabeth? Colleagues in technical support, can you help us please with Ariana and Elizabeth, allowing video and also microphones. Ariana and Elizabeth, please, thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. Can you, you guys see the screen? Yeah, perfectly. The presentation? Perfectly. Okay. Is it looking fine? Yes, it's looking fine. Actually, you're not presenting. You're just in reviewing mode. You can put it to present. Presentation mode. Yeah. Um, it's not in the slide mode. Um, how can I do that? Sorry. Um, you might be able to. Oh, now we can see Ariana and Elizabeth. Hi, how are you? Hello. Fantastic. You can see my video, sorry, but you will see soon once we start broadcasting. Is it this one? Can you see my screen? Now it's and correct. Is it presentation mode? Yes, That's now right. it's a presentation. Okay. Okay, let me uh, quickly play the video that you know if it's working fine. Um, Artificial intelligence is developing. Can you guys hear it? Yeah. Yeah, it we can hear it very well. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so is this now okay to go? Yes, I think we are uh, five minutes but away. We are missing if you want our, to start um, on time. Japanese presenter. Presenter. Yeah, actually, we are four. Yeah, five minutes away. In five minutes, we can start. But. Uh, there is one more person, right? Yeah, I'm a person, so you'll see that we are after more Japanese folks. Okay. And uh, if we start, so then you have to see that I you will be. Sure, you will be.
Oh, we see Yoichi in the meeting. Uh, yes. Yeah, can you hear? Yes, can Wonderful. Okay, great. Fantastic. Can you share your camera? Or can you, you share your it? camera or if you want to turn off your camera, that's fine, but let us know if you have any issues. Hey, Bin, you are the only one presenting, right? I mean, uh, the, I'm sharing slides. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, yeah, I'm the only one. And then the order. The screening button. Yeah. The order will be Yoji first, then Elizabeth, then Ariana. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's the other way around, right, Haven? Yes. Uh, we are gonna play the video, and then Elizabeth. And we have Yoichi as okay. the last person. And then we will open the floor. All right. Fantastic. So I'm going to start, and uh, then I'm going to pass the ball to you, <laughs> Hebin. OK? Thank you so much, Yoichi. <laughs> yeah. Hello. We, Thank you very much for your patience. We and appreciate it. It's been difficult. <laughs> right, yeah. I, yeah, I was surprised to see, you know, the flight didn't take off. When, but tomorrow morning, I will be there. Okay, so That's we are enough. almost ready to go. We will start. Is it okay if we start in two minutes? Yes? Yeah. Is sure. it okay? Okay, fantastic. In two minutes, we will start. Roberto, can you give us an idea for those of us online, uh, 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 who's in the room, if there's a good show in the room? <laughs> um right now they are using the camera just to point out the okay there we go thank the, you uh, uh, i will share a picture right now now you have it great yes Okay, we can start now? Sure, uh, okay. Yeah, they are just, they will cue us. Um, so can I go? <laughs> yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I'm Hebin, I'm a consultant for GPay. Uh, so we are about to ready to start. Uh, and let me first welcome you all to the GPay session uh, at the IGF 2022 Open Forum. For the logistical note, the session is for 30 minutes and there, uh, and there will be interaction with our distinguished speakers. So if you are interested in taking the floor, please indicate it by uh, using the raise, button, raise hand button uh, on the platform. But just in case it's not available, given the limitation of the platform, uh, please don't hesitate to put your comments or questions uh, to the speakers in the chat. We have moderators, including me, uh, ready to help read that out. So uh, we will start our session by watching a video. Artificial intelligence is developing at an unprecedented rate. As well as having the potential for good, it presents significant new challenges if left unchecked. For us to ensure that the power of AI is utilized to its full potential in a responsible way, international collaboration and coordination are critical. Launched in June 2020, the Global Partnership on Artificial Intelligence provides a point of contact for governments and the world's leading AI experts in order to promote the human-centric development and use of AI in a manner consistent with human rights, fundamental freedoms and democratic values. By bringing together a diverse group of AI experts from a wide range of sectors, GPay helps deliver better outcomes than any one country could accomplish alone. Their cutting-edge research and applied projects help countries bridge the gap between theory and practice. So far, GPay's experts have worked across four themes. Responsible AI, data governance, future of work, and innovation and commercialization. In its first two years alone, GPay's list of member countries nearly doubled. 
AI has the power to help us tackle the most pressing global issues, from climate change to social inequality. GPAY, its member countries and its experts hope to steer us towards a future where AI is a significant force for good in the world. Okay, welcome back. Uh, welcome again to this fantastic session that we are hosting today with uh, Global Partnership and Artificial Intelligence. I would like to invite Hei Bing Hong now to uh, start and to take the floor, please. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I would like to welcome our first speaker, Elizabeth Thomas Renault, head of the GP Secretariat. Elvis, when you're ready, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Robert and, and Heaven, for getting us started here. And uh, I'm sorry we're not there with you in person. And Addis, we'd really have enjoyed that very much. Um, I am somebody who's been involved with the IGF for a number of years in the past, having also served on the MAG. Um, and uh, and I, I wish you all a really excellent forum today and I'm pleased to be participating remotely. Um, so let's start off. I'd like to introduce a little bit about GPAY and I will then um, offer the floor to our lead uh, chair, Japan, um, to share a little bit more and then we'd be happy to take questions and, and uh, Try to address um, any any uh, anything thing left un, unstated in our presentation. Hibben, if you could just go to the next slide, please. So, uh, GPA is aiming to bring um, governments and experts together. Its aim is to support and guide the responsible adoption of artificial intelligence. It's grounded in the shared principles that are based on the OECD's AI recommendation. And these are also aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda. You can see the values um, highlighted in this slide that underpin those principles. Next slide, please. Uh, the features of the partnership are that it, it is um, bringing together members um, that set AI priorities. But then it's a multi-stakeholder group of experts that are working on applied AI projects, trying to bring in a perspective from a range of sectors. Uh, it's a global initiative. It's been growing quite rapidly. It's inclusive of countries from diverse perspectives um, that all share a common commitment to the responsible development of AI in line with the um, values that underpin the initiative. Next slide, please. So GPAY is an idea that was born inside the G7 under the vision of Canada and then France. Uh, it was founded in 2020, originally with 15 members. Uh, last week, uh, the GPAY summit was convened uh, in Tokyo and GPAY's council of ministers agreed to accept four no new members, Argentina, Senegal, Serbia, and Turkey. Uh, this brings GPAY's uh, membership now to 29. Uh, you'll see from this slide, GPA has quite a unique and slightly complex structure. Um, the Secretariat, which I'm leading, uh, is hosted at the OECD. We support the membership and the governance of GPA. Uh, we're funded through shared, equal shared amounts by the members of GPA. Under our recently revised terms of reference, the govern governance of GPA has evolved um, trying to integrate some of that collective wisdom that we've learned from our early years experience. The evolutions in structure include adding an executive council where all of GPA members will take decisions or make recommendations to the ministerial council that meets once a year. Um, this will facilitate the initiative in being a bit more responsive and also in managing its uh, expanded membership. The multi-stakeholder composition of the steering committee it's a, is it creates a bridge between the expert and the member perspectives as it develops work plans for projects. Um, the Council of GPA is chaired by a member that's elected for a one-year mandate, serving first as incoming chair, then lead chair, and then outgoing chair. Most recently, India was elected as GPA's incoming chair. Japan is currently serving as the lead chair and France is the outgoing chair. Canada and the US were both elected to the other seats of the steering committee 
uh, and to ensure that there's a developing country seat, um, the new terms of reference has added this, and, and this has yet to be filled since the terms of reference were just approved last week. Representatives of the members will serve on the steering committee alongside elected experts. The elected experts uh, have a seat representing science, civil society, industry, labor, and international organizations. And the steering committee is co-chaired with the lead chair and the chair of the multi-stakeholder experts group, which is another elected expert role. All experts are nominated to GPAY. They're part of the uh, multi-stakeholder experts, or MEG, not to be confused with the IGF, MEG. Um, they are uh, pursuing projects through working groups. The organization of the experts group and output um, is supported through two centers. Uh, these centers are located currently in Paris and Montreal. Uh, members do, ha they have opened the possibility of other centers in future, and in the near time, they're exploring more project engagement through um, national institutes, something that will um, evolve as the uh, govern new governance uh, framework is implemented. Next slide, please. So GPAY experts. Um, GPAY gathers experts from a wide range of sectors and a diversity of countries. GPAY experts can be nominated either by GPAY members or they can be self-nominated. They're selected and they participate in GPAY as individuals. They don't represent their organization or country, irrespective of whether they were nominated by a member or self-nominated. Their mandate is three years, and they may uh, be nominated from a non-member. Uh, they may be they may come from a non-member country if they're self-nominating. GPA outputs are produced under the sole responsibility of GPA experts and not the GPA members. So uh, the working groups that we mentioned, there are four expert working groups that are facilitated by the two centers. Um, while we are not actually supporting the um, project works directly at the Secretariat, I'm not well placed to elaborate in great detail on their projects. However, I can share with you a bit of a high level glimpse at some of the range of projects that are being working on, uh, uh, that are worked on across the um, topic areas. So Responsible AI Working Group is aiming to foster responsible human-centered and uh, use and development of AI. It's been working on the following projects in 2022. A responsible AI strategy for the environment, looking at developing global AI adoption strategies for climate action and biodiversity uh, preservation. There's a social media governance initiative that's working to identify a set of technical and democratic methods that governments could adopt to safely ask agreed questions and measurements about the effects of recommender systems and social media. There's a drug discovery project. This is aiming to address the demand from governments to find new ways to accelerate drug discovery more broadly by providing a set of recommendations to create an enabling environment for open AI research, this project is working towards the development of new drugs or the repurposing of existing ones to address public health challenges. There's also a pandemic resilience subgroup inside this working group that was working on and has now completed its work on uh, identifying impactful and practical AI initiatives that are helping the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. It's produced an update and upgraded catalog of practical initiatives that were initially commissioned in 2020, and it's transformed those into a living repository. Um, it's also trying to evaluate some of those that might be impactful and scalable initiatives um, that would benefit from partnership inside GPAY. The data governance uh, is a very productive working group that's been working on uh, promoting data for AI, whether it's being collected, um, used, shared, and deleted in both responsible and human-centric ways. There are three projects that have been uh, advanced in 2022, a project on enabling data sharing for social benefit through data institutions. This supports the creation of real-world data trusts to enable uh, safe and equitable data sharing, an important um, underpinning for responsible AI use. 
a project on advancing research and practice on data justice. This provides a framework for data justice research and practice. There's also a project on privacy enhancing technologies. So the technology to support data availability for AI, demonstrating the practical use of privacy enhancing and um, adjacent technologies for well-governed data use. The Future of Work Working Group analyzes the effect of AI on the working environment and workers, as well as how workers could further conduct, um, uh, sorry, uh, as well as how workers and employers can better design the future of work. There's an observation platform of AI in the workplace as one project. It's cataloging the impact of AI in companies and on workers to further conduct uh, in-depth studies that can be used from the observatory. Uh, there's also a project on AI and fair work. It's aiming to propose recommendations to decision makers on how to implement AI for fair work. The last project is also an AI living laboratory. It's working with a number of students and sharing applied experiments for accessing the impact of AI at both individual and company levels. Finally, we have a working group on innovation and commercialization. It's had a particular focus on SMEs, both with a broad adoption of AI by SMEs project that's focusing on supporting materials that help SMEs navigate AI depending on their level of AI maturity. There's also a more specific project focusing on AI for SMEs in agriculture that's aiming to foster adoption in line with the recommendation, but in this particular sector. And then finally, there is a project on AI innovation and intellectual property. It's focusing on building both a comprehensive strategy and awareness around uh, IP issues in AI. So uh, for countries, how to become a member of GPAY? Um, as I mentioned, its growth has been uh, very significant since, um, uh, since the launch. It's nearly doubled in two years. Um, membership in GPAY is open to countries, including emerging and developing countries. Uh, it's, uh, the decisions on membership are taken at the ministerial council level uh, based on a recommendation of the executive council. Uh, which considers uh, different factors. So the important factors in membership for GPA are that the applicant's commitment to responsible AI and the shared values reflected inside the OECD recommendation on AI, the degree to which the applicant takes a proactive role in advancing responsible AI grounded in human rights on domestic and international levels, and the level of expertise of AI experts working in the region across a variety of sectors and disciplines. Next slide, please. So for experts, I mentioned that they can be um, nominated by both GPAY members and or, or self or self nominated. Um, and then when they're nominated um, as an expert, there's a review process and um, the selection is undertaken with an appointment of uh, the GPAY Council, they become members of that multi-stakeholder experts group plenary, and they serve a three-year term. Their uh, experts are assigned to GPAY working groups at the beginning of the calendar year, and all um, GPAY experts, regardless of the way in which they were nominated, are asked to agree to engage uh, and, and, and endorse the alignment of the principles that are set out in the OECD recommendation on AI. That's actually a factor for anyone participating in GPAY project work. Um, they, they, they need to commit to the alignment of the principles. Uh, I mentioned the fact that they're individuals and not representing their organizations. Um, new members are invited to nominate experts at the start of the year, and there is a call for self-nominated experts that's usually issued via the GPAY website and social media. This is usually launched in the early half of the year. While we don't have specific deadlines at this time, um, information on that will be posted, uh, identified, and then posted shortly. I'll stop here and um, pass the floor back to Heaven uh, for our next speaker. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. And now I'd like to welcome Yoichi Ida, 
uh, Deputy Director General for G7, G20 Relations in the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications of Japan. Yoichi, uh, Mr. Yoichi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me now. And uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry uh, that I cannot join you in on site, uh, but uh, it's a great pleasure to be part of the global, uh, part, uh, global partnership on AI session in open forum at uh, IGF 2022. Adding to Elizabeth's uh, introduction to GPEI, uh, I, as Japan is the lead council chair of GPEI, uh, I would like to speak about the importance of the inclusivity and diversity in GPEI and the implication of its growth. Uh, my name is Yoichi Ida. The, uh, uh, I'm uh, serving as the council, uh, executive council chair at GPEG. So the era of artificial intelligence is now coming into full view, and AI has progressed to the extent of bringing innovation to industries transforming our daily lives and providing technology solutions to the most pressing issue of our time, such as climate change. However, this transformative potential can also become with challenges ranging from issues of bias, discrimination, safety, privacy infringement, or transparency, when left unchecked. Ultimately, to build a safe, healthy, and prosperous future, we need to discuss how humanity can live and work harmoniously with AI. The discussion is not limited to a certain group of people. It requires collaboration and coordination of diverse stakeholders, such as government, industry, civil society, and the academia, to unfold the full potential of AI to serve the good of society. In that respect, GPEI, despite its infancy, plays an important role in its existence. GPEI demonstrates the powerful synergies by embracing a plurality of perspectives. GPEI has expanded significantly by adding 14 new members in two years. The growth of GPEI illustrates a momentum among like-minded democracies to shape a broader AI society that is democratic, humane, and ethical. Aligning with the OECD recommendation on AI and committing to its principles, GPEI welcomes countries that are like-minded, that seek to implement this cutting-edge technology in a responsible and human-centered manner in line with the sustainable development goals. To do this, GPEI gathers leading AI experts from a wide range of sectors, stakeholders, and the diversity of countries. Their state-of-the-art research and the practical recommendations based on applied AI projects help GPI member countries ensure AI development and deployment that elevate humanity. For year of 2023, the GPI Council approved a set of thematic priorities to orient the GPI working groups and their project development. Those priorities include, one, the fight against climate change, two, health and life sciences, including combating the COVID-19 pandemic and preparing the world for future pandemics, 
Three, impact of AI on human rights, including gen gender equality and inclusiveness, factoring AI's potential to impact those with disabilities. And fourth, harnessing AI's potential to promote a resilient society. So for uh, as a lead uh, uh, share country, uh, Japan needs uh, uh, very uh, keen on uh, providing some additional value to the uh, GPI uh, project. Uh, for example, uh, uh, at this moment, uh, uh, Japan is uh, promoting our own national uh, AI strategy, which is aiming to deploy AI solutions in uh, various sectors and in every corner of society so that uh, the society can uh, harness the potential of AI uh, toward the future resilient society. And uh, one of the most ambitious uh, ideas, not yet uh, materialized as a project yet, but uh, one of the most ambitious idea is uh, planet monitoring by using sensors and AI to monitor every signs and uh, uh, changes in uh, natural conditions and uh, uh, field uh, monitoring, uh, which may lead, potentially lead to bigger natural disasters in the future, for, uh, such as earthquake, major floods or droughts, and to prevent or mitigate uh, some uh, ta by taking some measures based on such uh, evidence-based uh, analysis. And this is still an idea and just uh, partly being implemented uh, domestically, but uh, our, uh, uh, one of our ambition can be to expand, uh, share and expand such uh, 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 efforts uh, with other members uh, to, to uh, help uh, 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 promoting a more resilient society across uh, the world. So we believe that GPA shows its value in the global collaboration where multi-stakeholders are convened to engage to achieve the shared values and aspirations. Therefore, this open forum is a very much appreciated opportunity as GPAY pursues broader inclusivity and diversity as a global effort in the adoption of trustworthy AI. We welcome your interest and we invite you to visit our GPAY website, gpai.ai and engage with us further to know more about membership or participation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yoichi. Um, now I'd like to open the floor for any comments or questions. Uh, here in the audience, we can raise the hand whenever you want to make a question, please. And in the chat, we also, the, the participants online can just write uh, your question in the chat, please. Okay, we have three questions so far. Please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I note that on the website, the countries that are listed as part of GPI, there is a very literal involvement of Africa. What is uh, the GPI partnership plan for Africa on adoption of this? And also, you have very few experts from Africa as part of the various uh, working groups. Thank you. What would be the strategy plan? Um, thank you. Elizabeth? Uh, we can take the questions if you want, or you would like to answer each one of them separately. Yeah, why don't we take all the questions and then we'll, we'll respond to give the floor some time. Perfect, Elizabeth. Please go ahead. Thank you. Oh. Uh, my question is, considering all these global initiatives that are being de developed, like GPA and also OECD has some more uh, on, on AI governance in general, uh, how is the articulation between these initiatives? So they, they do like 
let's say an overlap but a constructive overlap you know like something that one initiative supports the other i don't know if there's room for that i would like to understand better Thank you. Um, mine is related to the first question. Um, I understood that one of the criteria to become a member is expertise. And I think we know that, uh, especially in African countries, that's often quite limited when you compare it to Europe or other regions. So in how far is GPI also committed to capacity building and actually building this expertise in the different countries so they can also participate in the discussions? Thank you. If I can, uh, thank yes, please go yes, ahead. Thank you. So I think the the question is uh, coming to the framework of uh, cooperation between different agencies. Like I'm coming from India. Japan has the co-chair. You know, I mean, lead chair and the co-chair. So there are these domestic <laughs> priorities and the global priorities of uh, of GPI. How are they linking together in terms of? Are you also talking on the larger sectors of governance and mandates, or is it like a you're trying to frame a guideline framework, so you know objectivity in two to three years how it is looked at. As of now, I see that the general responsible AI, you know, uh, the ethical frameworks, they are sectorial, but also global in a context. So I think there's there's a little bit of a debate of how these come together. Thank you. Thank you, and I think we have one more there. Yes, that that are that there are all the questions that we have. If uh, we have s uh, one online, uh, maybe if the uh, one of you that are co-hosting can uh, open the microphone for Eugenie. Don't kid. Yes, we see one person raise their hand. Yeah. And I'm monitoring the comments. Uh, there were two uh, questions. Uh, can you please explain what are the basic requirements to become a member of GP? Are there any policy, financial, practical requirements? And uh, another question we have is, does GP consider the promotion of AI regulations in the form of binding treaty? Or is it beyond the scope of your work? Okay, and um, please, can you open, I don't know if Adriana can help us with uh, opening mic for Evgeny? Then has okay, thank you, colleague. Do you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, uh, I'm glad to see you. Thank you for your presentation. I have two questions, maybe one short, short enough. So just operational issue. Uh, uh, from your presentation, I find out that uh, how the OECD provide only secretarial functions or, or some another projective activity. Because from my knowledge, OECD have uh, many committees, and do you have some uh, kind of the collaboration in these terms or just secretariat and second issue from your presentation i see how they uh, uh, there, uh, there are a few working groups and only one uh, one page i find out something like uh, how they um, outputs or deliverables in terms of innovation and uh, uh, providing how the monetization of this issue or do you have some other uh, type of deliverables or maybe you al already provide some some recommendations or, or some analytics thank you thank you um maybe we can go with elizabeth first and then uh, we continue with uh, mr yoichi addressing the questions that you've heard and you may like to answer Sure. Uh, thank you very much all for your interesting and um, worthwhile questions. I'll try my very best to cover them as comprehensively as I can. And then, of course, uh, I'm sure Yoichi has lots of um, thoughts as well to enhance uh, my, my response. On the first question about um, the involvement of Africa, it's point well, well taken. Uh, GPA is aiming to uh, expand. We have our first uh, new member from uh, Africa. Senegal is now a member of GPA. Um, we very much hope that with their um, participation in the initiative, it will help us, um, you know, a look to um, more engagement uh, with prospective members as well as um, through the self-nominated experts process to um, 
identify the right um, outlets to communicate when we have a call for expertise. We are very interested in both avenues of um, expanding the diversity and perspectives of GPA. That's a commitment um, at the highest level of the members. So um, I, I think you can expect that to evolve further. Um, on the question of, of OECD and GPA, it's an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. Um, so we are housed, at, the Secretariat's housed at the G, it's hosted by the OECD. What that means is that we do have our unique membership. The funding of the Secretariat is covered by um, an equal share of members. There's an expectation that all members will contribute to the funding of the Secretariat. Um, the OECD is a permanent observer to GPA. What that means is that they can participate um, attend and, and contribute substantively to any of the meetings of GPA. They, they're not participating in decision taking, but they are contributing substantively to discussions both at the governance level, so um, council, executive council, and steering committee, but also they will, um, they do have permanent observers um, in each of the working groups. What that means is that the working groups are informed of activities that are going on inside. Um, the OECD and uh, across actually the very wide ranging scope of the work that's done at the OECD, whether it's on um, you know, issues in the labor and social um, sciences area or um, science technology and innovation area where the AI um, working group is, is, uh, is, is located. Um, so that uh, that relationship allows for GPA to benefit from uh, the involvement of the of the OECD. It also, um, you know, our proximity at the at the Secretariat allows us to engage with them. One um, very sort of important point to note is that GPA was not intended by its founding members to duplicate activities that are taking place in the OECD or elsewhere on policy making. GPA is really focused on uh, benefiting from the experts and their insights into applied pro AI project work um, and leveraging those insights to inform policymakers in their other um, their pursuits and other um, discussions. So it, it's not meant to be creating um, you know a, du a duplication in that area. Um, on the question of um, the criteria and the expertise um, that's required, uh, at the moment I, I mentioned the criteria for membership um, that is framed in our terms of reference. Um, I think that there will be more work done by the members this year on um, membership, on inter interpreting the criteria and how to um, frame a vision and a process for membership. So I think. Um, that will evolve. There is, um, you know, a, a very strong importance around the like-mindedness, and um, also I think the intention of GPA outputs is that they would be something um, useful and scalable, not just for GPA members but for others as well. So um, they're. Uh, published and, and and shared in the in the marketplace for for those who can benefit from them. So, I think as GPA becomes more of a mature organization, we'll see um, uh, hopefully some capacity building um, attributes coming out of it as well beyond its membership as well as um, within it. On the question of um, uh the global and 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 domestic priorities we really uh, we, we had a very useful opportunity last year to engage with each of the members to better understand what they're looking for from from gpa and it's clear that there's quite a, a diversity of goals but um there is a, quite a strong link from uh the majority of members to um both 
contribute expertise and insight and orientation from what they're doing in their national institutes or their um, research and development priorities domestically into um, the sharing the shared projects and activities of GPA and similarly bring back insights from those internationally benefit from cooperation both contribute where um, they see you know sort of have unique expertise or unique perspectives and then um, you know benefit from that exchange both uh, with the socialization and, and cooperation of their experts as well as at the member level. Um, the basic requirements I did mention, the um, shared funding of the Secretariat. Project funding is um, currently funded through the centers of expertise uh, and the two governments that are hosting those centers of expertise, but there's an evolution uh, with this new terms of reference towards a pooled seed funding um, that will be uh, um, uh, set up through the Secretariat, but um, supported uh, to support members all contributing to projects um, and the governance of that still needs to be evolved. So I don't have a lot of detail on, on what that will entail. On the question of um, a treaty or scope, GPA is a voluntary organization. There are no um, uh, you know, treaty-like requirements. It's not intended to, um, to go in that direction uh, at this time. And I think I mentioned um, the others, but if I've left anything uncovered, I invite Yoichi to compliment what I have said. Yes, we can go with Mr. Yuichi, please. Yeah, thank you very much. No, uh, I think uh, your uh, responses are perfect. Uh, just to quickly uh, add two points. Uh, uh, one is uh, criteria for the membership. Uh, 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 because GPA is very new, I think criteria is still under development. Uh, we have uh, uh, discussed and uh, uh, formulated internally some criteria and uh, major part is you know the commitment to the uh, democratic values and the OECD uh, recommendations on AI. That is one very uh, strong uh, uh, requirement. And the other thing is the level of expertise. But this is my personal opinion, but uh, uh, the contribution by the uh, uh, expertise uh, should, uh, should be made by individual uh, experts joining GPA uh, in working group. And the commitment to democratic values or uh, OECD AI principles is taken by government. So there, there should be some, uh, you know, the combination of different players contribution and this, uh, this uh, structure of criteria should be uh, still uh, to be uh, deep, more deeply discussed, uh, I, I feel. Uh, and the secondly, the relationship between a OECD and the GPA, this is very important element. In the beginning, most of the countries uh, uh, in joining founding members uh, were supportive to uh, host uh, GPA secretariat at OECD because uh, we wanted to create synergy and complementary relationship between two initiatives. So uh, GPA is uh, uh, an initiative to promote project-based efforts uh, to to promote the deployment uh, in, uh, of AI in society, and OECD uh, 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 is uh, looks after the kind of uh, policy making or uh, uh, discussion on norms or some uh, governance uh, frameworks, and uh, so both uh, should uh, go hand in hand to promote uh, OECD recommendation on AI, which is non-binding regulatory framework at this moment. And this doesn't mean we are denying the binding regulation approach. That is something different and that should be something uh, uh, to be discussed at the government level 
uh, in governmental policy fora such as the G7 or G20. So we distinguish uh, different fora and uh, we uh, want to synergize all those efforts into a more harmonized way so that uh, the uh, development and deployment of uh, human-centric and responsible AI uh, could be more facilitated into uh, around the world. So thank you very much for for the uh, uh, participation and thank you very much for your interest. We are always uh, uh, open and uh, uh, waiting for your uh, uh, involvement. Mm, thank you, Yoichi and Elizabeth, for your responses to the questions. Um, I think we already passed our designated time. Um, uh, I'm afraid to say we are finishing our session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your participation and interaction. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye bye. Thank you very much, having Hong. It was a fantastic session. Thank you for attending. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Robert, for your help. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joichi, as well. See you soon. <laughs>